But now we take another step. In your first birth, you were born of a virgin, meaning not of a human father, but of God. This is really the revelation of your spiritual identity. In your second birth, you were born of a woman with a human father. This was your physical or mortal birth. And because of this second birth, born of a woman with a human father, you now live in a second self, a mortal self that must die. Human birth is always the veil, concealing the first birth as spirit. Human birth is the outer birth. It is a concept of the mind, which does not perceive the spiritual self born of God. This outer human birth into our second self is actually the symbol of what every individual must do within himself. Rebirth is the realization that my true father is God. I am the son of God. I am the living spirit of God. And when this understanding is brought into actual realization, that is the meaning of being born of a virgin. Then the second self is turned to the first self. This is what virgin birth means, and this is what religion has failed to teach. And yet, it was this great virgin birth, the second self dying, that the first self may be expressing the fullness of God which made possible all of the extraordinary achievements of Jesus Christ. And it was the invitation to heaven on earth issued to every man on earth when Christ said, deny thyself, pick up thy cross, follow me. Deny your second self, your human birth. Pick up your identity as living spirit, son of God, not of woman. Now walk in the invisible paradise that surrounds every one of us. Born of woman, we die. We reincarnate. Reborn to the spirit, our original self, which has never left us, we walk through the grave. Your virgin birth must become your daily assignment. And that will be the theme now, not only of your work from this tape and for the next month, but if you would walk this earth as a son of God, it must be your theme for the remainder of your lifespan. And really, that's what the Christ had in mind when... The statement was made in Matthew 7.14. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. Leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. You see, no person born of woman will ever find it. That's why it's so narrow. And even after you have accepted daily rebirth from your second self back to your first self, if that isn't your goal seven days of the week, 24 hours of the day, the way is still going to be too narrow for you. Rebirth does not consist of three meditations a day. Nor is it accomplished by hearing a tape even every day of the week. To succeed, to be a son of God, rebirth must actually be your only purpose in life. Seek ye first the kingdom. All things will then be added. Rebirth first. And you say to yourself immediately, but 
How impractical can I get? How can I be thinking of rebirth 24 hours a day? Even Jesus Christ didn't have to go to a job in the morning. Jesus Christ didn't have a, a wife and a family to support. Jesus Christ didn't have to support an aging mother. Jesus Christ didn't have grandparents who were on their last legs. Oh, you can think of a million reasons why rebirth can't be your way 24 hours a day. But fortunately, I can think of many reasons why it can be. Rebirth for you who wish to walk in the kingdom of God must receive total and top priority. Without exception, every day. It cannot be sandwiched in between your business and your marriage and your home and your children and your social relationships. It must be the central theme the underlying purpose of everything that you do. It can never happen by itself. It must be a conscious act on your part. And this conscious act must be a continuous act without interruption. So that every day you awaken to only one purpose, not how can I build a better business, not how can I make my marriage happier. Not how can I ensure the future of my children. No, those things will be taken care of simply by your attending to the first goal. You must be the living resurrection. Not talking about it, not just thinking about it, but building your entire life around it so that you become accustomed to walking every day in the kingdom of God on earth, to expressing more and more of your first self, not your second, your permanent self, not your temporary sense of self, so that you ascend out of all mental, all limited physical aspects of life out of false boundaries, out of the unreal horizons of the mortal life that we have thought we were living, into life, life itself, being, not becoming. Then for you, the gate, though narrow, opens and it leads unto life. In order to make daily rebirth your way, you'll find it necessary to integrate it into your business, to integrate it into your marriage, to integrate it into all your relationships. You see, not to sandwich it in, not to say, for example, that, oh, I have a coffee break coming at 10.30, and so at 10.30 when nobody's around, I will go and have a meditation. That's not enough. What about from 9 to 10.30? Aren't you going to be the Son of God then? You see how important it is to make that hour and a half a spiritual hour and a half, not just to wait for the coffee break and then to have your meditation? In other words, behind that hour and a half must be your conscious awareness of your identity. You visit your relatives. They don't study the infinite way. They don't even have a spiritual spark in them that you can converse with. And so you say to yourself, well, for these two or three days or this week that I visit them, I just can't be myself. Oh, no, that won't go. Daily rebirth means daily rebirth. And when you go to visit them, you must discover the Son of God in them as well as in yourself. And this is a great trial. 
But that's what this class is about. It is to prepare you to do that. So that when you go forth, wherever you go, when you see the four billion who do not have a spiritual spark in them, you walk into a room as the living light and you do not hide your light under a bushel because your relatives don't have the spark or your business associates. And you don't make a big issue out of it either. You don't wear it on your sleeve. You wear it in your heart. You let your light shine because you are you, the son of God. And you know it consciously. Now, we have not yet walked through the narrow way. 